This is one of sport's great proving grounds. A gateway to glory where heroes are made. 30 tournaments spanning 17 countries on three continents. It's a 10 month campaign to determine the very brightest prospects in golf. Yeah, Maddie, Maddie. Oh, oh, he is right God. into this. Brilliant. That could just have sealed his promotion. What a way to do it. Along the way, a chance for the class of 2022 to expand horizons and sample life on tour. Welcome to my messy home this week here. Hey, hey, I hope you got that, did you? Finish the season in the top 20 of the Road to Mallorca rankings and secure a golden ticket to the DP World Tour. That is the dream shared by all who compete on the Challenge Tour. This is a big week in golf, as all eyes focus on St Andrews in Scotland. It's old course, host to the 150th Open Championship. Eight of our former alumni have previously won major titles, but only one, Henrik Stenson, has lifted the coveted claret jug. The Swede triumphant in Troon, a full 16 years on from claiming the 2000 Challenge Tour rankings title. As for the class of 2022, well, attention lies a little further south, 100 kilometers outside of Paris, France, to be precise, where Golf PGA France du Vaudreuil is poised to host event 14 of 30 on the road to Mallorca. Obviously, the Open Championship is uh, something very special for, for all Europeans. This year, 150th in St Andrews, I don't think it gets much bigger than that. For an Englishman or any Brit, I think it's the one that means the most the one closest to home and um, yeah I'm sure there's a, a lot of guys that want to lift that claret jug. It's going to be huge I mean just the experience itself I mean they're going to cherish that for the rest of their lives I think even if you've played the Open before I think this one is going to be particularly special so uh, I mean I didn't try to qualify last week because I thought it was a little much but I mean for those guys unbelievable. Well, in order to reach that stage, the remit is clear. Close out the season within the top 20 on the road to Mallorca. Nearing the halfway point in our season, those rankings are taking shape. JC Ritchie, Oliver Hunderball and Jens Dantorp leading the charge, well positioned for promotion. Freddie Schott's back-to-back -back top five finishers have propelled him up the rankings as the race for a spot among golf's elite hots up. And who knows, maybe one day their own place in Open Championship history too. But for the moment at least, those dreams can wait. It's back to the here and now. And a strong showing in France this week would do wonders for all of our promotion hopefuls. With that in mind, we head to the first tee at Golf PGA France du Vaudreuil with Josh Antman, your guide. It's a stunning first morning here in northern France. And it's Sebastian Gandon who will get things underway. Picking up that tee early, yeah, seems to like that. Connor Purcell on the 11th here. Mixed season so far for Connor. Three cuts made, three cuts missed. This for Birdie at the par four. Oh, judged to perfection. Lovely way to get under par in your first round. Matthew Baldwin started on the 10th hole, so this is last hole the night. He's had birdies at 7 and 8. He's approaching to the par 4. Ah, oh, stunning. Stunning shot from the Englishman. Craig Ross has found the middle of this 14th fairway. Bogey free so far for his first round. Just a wedge in hand. This approach into the par four. Oh, a bit of action on that too. Good look for Birdie in a few moments time for Craig. Back to Baldwin on nine. You'd think this is a formality for the Englishman. And it is. Fantastic first round for Matt Baldwin. 66 he'll be signing for and he'll be very pleased with his first day's work. Craig Ross, we saw his approach a few moments ago. Just to get to five under par and continue his good day's work. Oh, 
superbly rolled by the Scot. Fantastic first day he's having. Now, South Africa's Jack Blau not been having the day he would have wanted. Four over to this point. He's greenside at this par five, though. Oh, that'll improve things. An eagle for Blau. <laughs> Can't hold a putt, but I can maybe hold some out of the bunker. Exactly. Well, perhaps inspired by his playing partner's success from the sand, Craig Ross would make further gains on his way home. The Scotsman now topping the leaderboard through 18 holes on seven under par. Behind him, no less than four Frenchmen in the top seven. Speaking of our French contingent, they were facing a little extra incentive this week. A mini order of merit in effect to reward the highest flying Frenchman with a spot at this September's prestigious Open de France. I played the Open de France three years ago and I mean it's amazing, you know, and when you're French it's kind of a legendary golf course. I mean we played the French Championship when we were young and there's a lot of competitions going there and you know going there and playing the Open de France is just something amazing so I mean yeah having a spot this week is is great. Well qualification will be based on results in Le Vaudreuil and those from the Blot Open de Bretagne two weeks ago. As such Hugo Cousseau leads the race. I felt a lot of support from the from the crowd, and that was very nice. And uh, yeah, I had like a top 10 finish, and I was happy to finish the, the week, uh, yeah, under par, and yeah, with a good, great top 10 for me. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. I was fortunate to be like in, yeah. I was in the last group on uh, Sunday and Saturday. It's great, you know, playing in front of everybody. Uh, it felt good, you know, to be home and. Have, people supporting you and everything, so hopefully it's the same this week. I live an hour away, so it's not that bad of a trip for me. No, 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 no. Yeah, you're going to have family, no? Yeah, I have my grandparents, my parents, some friends and everything, so it's going to be nice. We all know each other for a long time now, since since the, I mean the, the French uh, Championship, because we used to play together like against one each other, so it's it's very nice to, to play from guys that you know for 10, 15 years. So we are rival on the golf course, but a good fan outside. So I say it's more about friendship than, than rivalry. Yeah. So of course, I mean, playing home, I'm playing Euro Open is always awesome, you know, and when you grow up playing golf, it's probably one of your goals, you know. Uh, but yes, ultimately that top 20 is definitely the, the main goal, I think, for everybody. And it will be intriguing to see how the week plays out. Having the chance to play in your national open and getting inside the top 20 of the rankings are top priorities for these two. And of course, we wish all from France bon chance. Oui. And there were plenty of Frenchmen in the mix through 18 holes, remember? A Gallic group chasing down our leader, Craig Ross of Scotland. Well, doing the heavy lifting for us in the commentary box on day two, once again, Josh Antman. The overnight leader, Craig Ross, greenside in two at this par five 18th. It's his ninth hole, started on the 10th. Lovely touch there from the Scot. Great couple of days he's having so far in France. Frenchman, Jung Wong Ko, Also started on the 10th hole. This at the first on the scorecard. Oh, beautiful. From Co. Three under after the first day. Going well again today. Back to Ross. Delightful chip up to here. And this to get to double digits. And he is the leader at 10 under par. Catch me if you can, everyone. Co with a tap in here, you would think, for Birdie. Not having a great season, really, the Frenchman. But finding some form this week. And seven under par, he gets to. Nathan Kimsey here at the seventh for Birdie, having a great run of form the last few weeks. 13th at Cascada Challenge, 10th in Italy last week. 
want this to get to double digits at 10 under par. Oh, fantastic. Well judged from the Englishman, continuing that rich vein of form. Theo Segrist here at the fourth. 68 in round one. Just looking to punch this one into the par four. Oh, fantastic job he's done there. Looking to impress the home crowd. Sam Locke, his last hole the ninth. Is to get to seven under par. Oh, and he does. Confidently rolled. And he's looking good going into the weekend. Three French players find themselves inside the top 10 after 36 holes. And that top spot for the Kazoo Open de France looks like going down to the wire. But it was Nathan Kims's stunning 66 that stole the show. It's always always nice playing when you've uh, got a chance of winning. So um, yeah, I've had a sort of few weeks where I've been kind of up there over the last month or so. So um, yeah, sort of used to it a little bit. But um, yeah, hopefully we can uh, go a few better than the last few times. After the break, brush strokes. Stephen Tiley gets in touch with his artistic side. Did you get that? And we'll see if leader Nathan Kimsey can add the finishing touch at the 2022 Le Vaudreuil Golf Challenge. Welcome back to the Challenge Tour and to France, where event 14 of 30 on the road to Mallorca is underway, 100 kilometers northwest of Paris. A backdrop for the week, Golf PGA France de Vaudreuil. A lot of people around watching and um, there's a bit of buzz about the place, which is good. Um, I like the course. I think it's, you know, you've really got to think your way around it rather than overpowering it. It's not for me. I don't see that as the play, but I've just been enjoying it and it's nice to be in contention again. Well, the French always do bring a strong crowd and this golf course hasn't disappointed. Over to Josh Antman to guide us through moving day. Clement Sorde is having a fantastic day three. Six birdies in his last eight holes to here. This for birdie on 15. Oh, just grazes the left edge. Finding some form out there today, the Frenchman, pleasing the home fans. He'll stay at 11 under par, looking strong. Uh, Robin C.O. Segrist, he's green side here in two at the par five. Anywhere within a couple of feet will do. I think that's a birdie for the Frenchman and to get to 12 under par. Mikael Lundberg. This for Eagle at the par five. Not this time, two Challenge Tour wins for Lundberg. The last coming back in 2014 in Austria. This to join Sir Segrist at 12 under par. No problems at all. Still grinding away hard. The Swedish player. And Nathan Kimsey. Just off a double bogey at 17. He's holding the pose here at the last. This is second into the par five. Oh, that's absolutely stunning from the Englishman. What a chance he's got now to take the lead heading into the final day. Big crowds following Kimsey and this to lead by one with 18 holes to play. Fantastic way to finish round three for Nathan Kimsey. And he's your leader. Can he turn his recent run of good form into a victory? Mikhail Lundberg's bogey-free round was one of only two on Saturday, with Robin Skio Sigrist making the most of home advantage. But ahead by one, heading into Sunday, Nathan Kimsey. Well, there's plenty of artistry on show inside and outside the ropes at this venue. PGA Golf du Vaudreuil is adorned with the sculptures of leading French artists who bear privé. 
and it's all provided an unexpected inspiration to one of our number. Trying to draw the last green, really. So it's pretty cool, yeah. Uh, it's very unique and, 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 and very, very cool to, to see, yeah. Have you got the right paint here? Is this the right paint for the right canvas? I'm blaming my tools here already. We play in a sport where you start scratching the next week and you almost forget about it and you're on to the next one and you don't have time, much time to reflect from the, from the whim, but every time I come back here, little memories come into my head and trigger, so that's always nice. It's always nice to get that feeling. Uh, come back, we've won. To finally get it over the line it was just more relief, really. You always try and pinpoint what you did and try and replicate it week after week, but certain things go your way and you just think, hang on, this is, this is pretty neat here and, and, you, and you get it over the lines. Uh, there was a couple of up and downs uh, that I just remember that were, were very important. I mean, it's very French this, isn't it? This is very French. All I need is like a beret and a, to be on the river. I've had a 218 starts now on the Challenge Tour. So I've just been playing the Challenge Tour a long time. They're not going to put this up in the clubhouse, put it that way. I helped out my dad. We made uh, hand sanitizer in the, in the pandemic and yeah, a long way from here and the fairways that we're used to. I have got a time limit in my head. It's not too long around the distant future. I've done my PGA um, and I want to go into to coaching and I've, I'd like to pursue that a little bit more and, and we'll, go, we'll go from there, yeah. This is it, this is the last touches. Look at that, hey, look at that. The last touch, pin in the middle of the green. Classic golf, Picasso signing off. And that's it, done, over and out. Well, art, of course, is a subjective business. I'm sure someone out there will like that little creation. After 218 starts and a great challenge tour career for Stephen Tiley, it might be best if he sticks to the day job. Talking of which, the question here, who could catch our leader, Nathan Kimsey, at the 2022 Le Vaudreuil Golf Challenge? Well, taking us through the final day, Josh Antman once again. Overnight leader Nathan Kimsey kicks his final round off, just a three wood off the first here. Gorgeous conditions here in northern France once again. Line that one up and down slightly. I have to see with that one. Sam Locke in trouble here at the first. This is fourth shot. Green side will need something special here to not drop any shots. And he's found that something special. That's fantastic from Sam Locke. Keeps a bit of momentum going in his round. Now Kimsey bogeyed the first hole. And this on two now, long way in for his second. That's a fantastic approach from Kimsey. Try to bounce back from that bogey. Matt Baldwin having a good week, the Englishman. This on the little par three, slightly downhill, pin at the back today be quite aggressive the players oh and Baldwin has been delightful approach good chance of birdie back to Kimsey this to take the lead on his own at 13 under par and he's putted superbly all week Kimsey continuing to do so in this final round he's the man to beat Now Baldwin, this to get to 12 under par and put some pressure on Kimsey. And he's done it. That's a fantastic birdie of that par three for Baldwin. C.O. Segrist, this on his last hole to tie Kimsey at 14 under par. Look at the crowds following the Frenchman. Be a huge cheer if this goes in and it does. Robin C.O. Segrist, loving it at home, punch in the air, yeah, why not? Now, Kimsey, this for the tournament and his first title on the Challenge Tour, otherwise we're going to a playoff. It goes by the hole, 
So him and Robin C.O. Segrist will be heading to a playoff to decide this title. Confirmation of how it looked after 72 holes then. Mathieu de Cotigny's Lafon's brilliant Sunday 64, moving him up 29 places, but Robin Skio Segrist and Nathan Kimsey left to fight it out for victory. We're now onto the fourth hole of this playoff. Huge crowds following this duo. Kimsey up first, and to put the pressure on Co Segrist. Fantastic from Kimsey. A little fist pump, and now all the pressure is on the Frenchman. So to keep the playoff going and to go to a fifth playoff hole, Co Segrist needs to hold this. Oh, and he lips out. Disappointment from the crowd, but finally, Nathan Kimsey is a winner on the Challenge Tour. Took four playoff holes to get there, but he takes the title. I've had a, a, a decent sort of last six, eight weeks, um, sort of going okay on the rankings, and obviously this, this shoots me up there into uh, a position where you know obviously top, top 20 by the end of the year is is a real you know real realistic goal now so yeah hopefully i can just keep pushing on and uh, pick up some more points the rest of the year so here's how our week in france affected the road to mallorca rankings there were steps in the right direction for the likes of hugo cousseau and dion hermeses but among the biggest movers, our runner-up at Le Vaudreuil, Robin Skio Segrist. Driving on home soil, he rose 30 places into 14th spot. Nathan Kimsey's win saw him hoisted 33 places up to 7th, while Clément Sourdet continues to impress. He's now sat in 4th. But at long last, JC Ritchie has been toppled from top spot, replaced by Denmark's Oliver Hunderbond. And with that, we bid au revoir to France. As we said at the start, it's all eyes on St Andrews in Scotland at the 150th Open Championship next. A number of our former Challenge Tour alumni are in the field this week, and we wish them all the very best of luck. As for the current crop of hopefuls, it's onwards to Austria, where the Joram Bank Open awaits, as their pursuit of a place at the very apex of the game continues.